गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग चित्रलेखा गुड मॉर्निंग सौम्या गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेरी वॉर्म गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू टूडे वी हैव टू डिस्कस द केस ऑफ सुधा सिंह वर्सेज स्टेट ऑफ यू पी एंड अनदर फ्रॉम द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन दिस वॉज अ क्रिमिनल अपील फाइल्ड बिफोर द सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड ऑन द बेंच वॉज जस्टिस ए एस बोपन्ना जस्टिस वी राम सुब्रमण्यम एंड जस्टिस एस ए बॉबडे नाउ there are facts of the case that a three judge panel led by former cji sa bob de justice as bopanna justice v subra rama subramanyam overturned an allahabad high court verdict awarding bail to a gangster arrested under section 31 of the Uttar Pradesh Gangster and Anti-Social Activities Prevention Act 1986 The accused a contract killer and sharp shooter murdered Raj Narayan Singh with the help of others In reality the accused has been charged in 15 previous cases with severe offenses such as murder attempted murder and criminal conspiracy In this case the surviving husband of the deceased victim opposed the high court's decision to grant bail to the accused who was arrested on allegations of violating sections 120b 302 3 and 25 this 120b and 302 of IPC and section 3 and section 25 of the up gangster and anti social activities prevention act 1986 okay so th these are the facts of the case okay that he was accused this person was accused under section 3 and section 25 of the up gangster and anti social activities prevention act 1986 and under section 120b and 302 of ipc that means section 120b uh, is criminal conspiracy punishment for criminal conspiracy and section 302 is punishment for murder okay now there was a bail and the bail was opposed okay the, usually what happens whenever a person has accused of committing any crime then the first thing that the accused has to do is to apply for bail okay is to apply for bail right now when this person applied for bail before the allahabad high court the allahabad high court accepted the bail application and granted him the bail but in this case the surviving uh, the surviving bereaved member of the deceased victim opposed the high court's decision she came in a criminal appeal against the judgment against the bail order of the allahabad high court what happens when you file a bail for example in, in a district court before uh, the chief judicial magistrate for example and if for example your bail gets rejected then you have an authority to you have you are competent enough to file a bail appeal before the district and sessions judge okay before the sessions judge what happens then even if any person is aggrieved from the bail order of the sessions judge the aggrieved party may file an appeal before the high court if even if any person is aggrieved by the bail order of the high court 
he may come in a criminal appeal before the Supreme Court. Okay. So the accused, he was a contract killer. He was accused under Section 3.1 of the UP Gangster and Anti-Social Activities Prevention Act 1986. Okay. And Section 25 of UP Gangster and Anti-Social Activities Prevention Act. Okay. Now, it is important to ponder upon the text of Section 3 1 of the UP Gangster and Anti Social Activities Prevention Act. Okay, what does Section 3 say? I am reading this. It talks about the penalty. A gangster shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which shall not be less than two years and which may extend to 10 years and also with fine and which shall not be less than 5000 rupees. Provided that a gangster who commits an offense against the person of a public servant or the person of a member of the family of a public servant shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which shall not be less than three years and also with fine which shall not be less than 5000 rupees. Whoever being a public servant. Okay, now what was the section? Section 3, subsection 1. And that's what I have just read before you. Section 3, subsection 1 that anybody who is proven, who is a proven gangster and he shall be punished with a, uh, with imprisonment of either description for a term which shall not be less than two years and which shall and which may extend and which which may extend to ten years and also with fine and which shall not be less than five thousand rupees. Okay. Okay. Are you are you getting my point or not? Are you getting my point or not? Any confusion so far? Are you getting my point? Dekhi samaj nahi aara. Baat jazbaat ho tum says that unki samaj nahi aara. कौन सा पॉइंट आपकी समझ में नहीं आया अभी मैं आपको क्लियर कर दूं मैं आपको क्लियर कर दूं बता दीजिए मुझे कौन सा पॉइंट समझ में नहीं आ रहा है देखिए एक गैंगस्टर है ठीक है देस वन गैंगस्टर हु इज अक्यूज्ड अंडर यूपी गैंगस्टर एंड एंटी सोशल एक्टिविटीज प्रिवेंशन एक्ट 1986 अंडर सेक्शन 3 एंड आई एम रीडिंग दैट सेक्शन दैट सेक्शन कंटेन्स द क्वांटम ऑफ पनिशमेंट ओके दैट दैट ओके आई एम रीडिंग दिस डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज्ड लिसन टू मी नाउ Okay, that person happens to be a proven gangster and section 3 lays down the quantum of punishment for such gangster. Okay, that if such gangster is a proven gangster, then he shall be punished with the imprisonment which shall not be less than 2 years and which may extend to 10 years and also with fine which shall not be less than 5000 rupees. That's it. Provided that a gangster who commits an offense against the person of a public servant or the person of a member of the family of a public servant shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which shall not be less than three years and also with fine which shall not be less than five thousand rupees okay 
Now this penalty is talking about, this section 3 is talking about the quantum of punishment. Okay. Besides this, he was also accused under section 120B and section 302 of the IPC for committing murder and for also doing criminal conspiracy. Okay. Now they, under section 120B, there is criminal, criminal conspiracy. You all know that. I, and IPC and section 302 it's punishment for murder under IPC okay and so far as section 3 is concerned I've already read this that any gangster who is committing any offense against the public servant or the member of any public servant member of a family of public servant then there is a description for a term there is a de description for uh, of punishment for a term which shall not be less than three years and also with fine which shall not be less than five thousand rupees okay so it only talks about the quantum of punishment that's it now coming to the point coming to the coming to the facts again that it is a three judge bench and this bench is this honorable bench is listening to a criminal appeal filed by the um, surviving member of the deceased victim sudha okay she filed uh, uh, um, the criminal appeal against the bail order because when this accused filed a bail before the Allahabad High Court, the Allahabad High Court granted him the bail. Now she came in an appeal against the bail order before the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court was considering this. Okay, The appealing party said that the accused is a contract executioner. So pari killer hai Okay, The appealing party Sudha Singh was opposing the bail who came against the judgment of the uh, against the order of the Allahabad High Court she contended that the appealing party said that the accused is a contract executioner he kills on a supari who is facing roughly 15 charges against him he's a supari killer and he's currently facing 15 charges against him including murder attempted murder and criminal tricks the appealing party has also claimed that the learned, learned High Court did not consider the charged prior criminal history before absolving him as well as the compromising of the observers which forced the Sessions Court to grant assurance to the witness. And the appealing party said that the appellant said in this case that the Allahabad High Court while granting him the bail did not reckon with his history which is full of, which is replete with so many crimes, so many things. Okay. He has a criminal history and Allahabad High Court absolved him of all his charges. Despite the fact that his history is replete with crimes and charges. And he's currently facing 15 charges against him, including murder, attempted murder and criminal trick. Allahabad High Court should not have granted him the bail. And since it has done that, I have come in an appeal against the order of the Allahabad High Court before this honorable bench of the Supreme Court to reconsider this issue and cancel his bail. Okay. The Supreme Court has been told that the Allahabad High Court has agreed to drop some of the more lenient criteria such as the execution of an individual attached according to the general tendency of jail specialists and the organization of assurances within a month after his delivery. Okay. The Supreme Court has been told. Supreme Court ko ye bataya gaya. That the Allahabad High Court has agreed to drop some of the more lenient criteria. Okay. That the Allahabad High Court has, you know, agreed to drop. Allahabad High Court, you know, has some very lenient criteria while granting the bails to the accused has some very lenient criteria. Now these criterions have been agreed upon by the Allahabad High Court to be dropped by it such as the execution of an individual attached according to the general tendency of jail specialists and the organization of assurances within a month after his delivery. While Allahabad High Court while granting the bail what it does the Allahabad High Court says that uh, while granting the bail, we have to see the general tendency of the jail specialist, how the, the, the conditions, the people, the jail superintendent, the staff of the jail uh, is what kind of a staff we have in the jails. Okay, then we have to see the assurance 
assurances that means the people who are assuring his witnesses his presence that he is not going to flee you know we have to see we have to reckon with all these things the Allahabad High Court was trying to consider every factor while granting the bail but the Supreme Court was told that Allahabad High Court up till now has been uh, has been agreeing you know has been following some very lenient criteria while granting the bail and so Allahabad High Court in most of the cases agrees upon while for, for granting the bail to any, any accused but now the Supreme Court was told that the Allahabad High Court has agreed to drop some of the some of its lenient criteria. okay by coordinating the accused illegal operations the High Court has simply ignored the accused's history and ability to repeat his crimes okay by coordinating the accused's illegal operations the High Court has simply ignored the accused's history and ability to repeat his crimes do you know what is recidivism do you know what is recidivism who is a recidivist i have told you some time back in one of my lecture what is who is a recidivist and what is recidivism do you remember This is a term which is most often used in criminology. If any of you has ever read criminology, he or she must be well aware of the meaning of this term, recidivism. Habitual offender, very good, Rablin. Very good, habitual offender. That means the person who keeps on repeating the crimes who keeps committing the crime he is in the habit of committing the crimes he has become accustomed to commit crimes so by coordinating the accused's illegal operations the high court has simply ignored the accused history and ability to repeat his crimes the widow of the deceased victim also stated that the accused acted uncooperatively during the trial alleging that he did not cross examine witnesses initially then prayed for their recall and then intimidated witnesses with with his henchmen so like the widow of the deceased victim what she said that by coordinating the accused illegal operations the high court has simply ignored the accused history and ability to repeat his crimes he is a habitual offender he is a recidivist okay that is his history and accused he the accused is involved in illegal operations and they have been categorically ignored by the Allahabad High Court okay yes Aksham one who repeats the crime again and again the widow of the deceased victim also stated that the accused acted uncooperatively during the trial and the widow of the deceased victim she also stated before the Supreme Court that when the trial was going on when the trial is conduct is being conducted in the in the district court he is not cooperative at all he is acting so uncooperatively during the trial alleging that he did not cross examine witnesses initially then prayed for their recall and then intimidated witnesses with his henchmen kiraye ke log bula ke hamare witnesses ko dhamkiyan de raha hai ye theek hai pehle apne aap ko aur apne iske jitne bhi ye defense witnesses the isne isko cross examine nahi karne diya और जब वो क्रॉस एग्जामिन नहीं हो, हो पाए तो प्रॉपर यू नो उनको दोबारा बुलवाया ओके सो द विडो ऑफ द डिसीज विक्टिम आल्सो स्टेटेड दैट द अक्यूज एक्टेड अनकोऑपरेटिवली ड्यूरिंग द ट्रायल एलिजिंग दैट ही डिड नॉट क्रॉस एग्जामिन विटनेसेस इनिशियली देन प्रेड फॉर देयर रिकॉल पहले जब हमने प्रोसिक्यूशन ने अपने विटनेसेस प्रेजेंट किए कोर्ट में when we presented our witnesses they did not cross examine our witnesses they did not do that and once they went away they they, they then prayed then he prayed for their recall ke unko wo dobara bulwaya jaye humne to cross examine hi nahi kiya aur jab unko bulwaya gaya dobara to wo already unko dhamkaya ja chuka tha then intimidated witnesses with his henchmen kiraye ke log bhej kar apne log bhej kar jo inki chele chapate hote hain unko bhej kar और हमारे हम हमारे विटनेसेस को इंटिमिडेट किया आई यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट वॉट द विडो ऑफ द डिसीज विक्टिम सेड एज एन अपेल एंड शी कंटेंडेड दैट दिस पर्सन दिस पर्सन द अक्यूज 
they did not cooperate at all during the trial when we presented our witnesses prosecution witnesses in the trial he did not cross examine them his advocate did not cross examine our witnesses and then when the when the hearing was over they went away in the next hearing their advocate was contending that we have not cross examined the prosecution witnesses they must be recalled and when on the next hearing the court recalled them before that they were already intimated by his henchmen are you getting my point what happened what what actually happened she was narrating each and every minutest detail what has happened with her the accused's behavior prompted the sessions court to order that security be provided in the courtroom and for the witnesses during the trial then looking into this matter the accused looking into this matter and reckoning with all these things the the behavior of the accused the sessions court was prompted to order that security be provided in the courtroom that courtroom ke andar jo hai wo security provide ki jayegi and for the witnesses during the trial theek hai witnesses ko jab tak trial chalega witnesses ko pura protection diya jayega the appellant also presented a persuasive case that giving bail to criminals on a regular basis has affected law and order in the past the appellant also presented a persuasive case that giving bail to criminals on a regular basis has affected law and order in the past getting my point now appellant said that this has become a regular order in the high courts and in the trial courts bail is so easily granted to these kinds of people and they then they then become recidivist and they commit crimes with greater and greater impunity that's what happens in india have you understood up till here i hope this is not you know the facts are not amalgamated and you are is e easily able to decipher what happened at what stage are you are, are you getting my point this is a bail appeal a criminal appeal to oppose the bail against the bail order of the allahabad high court are you getting my point or not baat jis baat ko tum say is okay understood somya has understood anyone else any question up till here before we move ahead okay okay it's clear now vikas dube this is the accused vikas dube was charged with 64 criminal charges including murders dukhati criminal intimidation extortion and violations of the up gangster act but was released on bail vikas dube was charged with 64 criminal charges including murders dukhati criminal intimidation extortion and violations of the up gangster act but was released on bail finally eight police officers were allegedly killed with numerous more critically injured as a squad of officers attempted to apprehend him in a case taking the facts as a whole the court concluded that the high court overlooked a number of factors such as the anticipated threat to witnesses necessitating the preliminary court's issuance of observer insurance okay now the appellant presented a uh, the facts you know facts numerical facts that he has 64 criminal charges against him which include murder 
Dakati, criminal intimidation, extortion. Do you, are you well aware of the of all of all these of offenses? Perhaps you would be aware of murder. What is Dakati? What is criminal intimidation? What is extortion? You must be you must be well aware. I hope. I hope that you must be well aware of all these offenses and violations of the UP Gangster Act. He's a gangster and he's a supari killer. He's a contract killer. But he was unfortunately released on bail. Finally, eight police officers were allegedly killed with numerous more critically injured as a squad of officers attempted to apprehend him in a case. Okay. Eight police officers were allegedly killed with numerous more critically injured as a squad of officers attempted to apprehend him in a case. Taking the facts as a whole, the court concluded that the High Court overlooked a number of factors such as the anticipated threat to witnesses necessitating the preliminary court's issuance of observer insur insurance okay the matter is very serious he has killed eight police officers okay with numerous more critically injured as a squad of officers attempted to apprehend him in a case when a squad of officers went to arrest him he attacked them he killed eight police officers and numerous other police officers were critically injured. Now the court before granting the bail should reckon with all these factors as a whole. The court concluded that the high court has overlooked a number of factors such as the anticipated threat to the witnesses. He's going to be a menace for the society if he is released on bail and he is going to be a great menace and great problem for the witnesses involved in the case particularly okay yes Prableen yes you are absolutely right issues is it necessary for the courts to consider the risk to the lives and liberty of victims witnesses if an accused is released on bail is it necessary for the courts to risk the lives and liberty of victims witnesses if an accused is released on bail that was the issue framed by the supreme court in this case whether it is important for the courts do you have any and you must be having any you a little idea at least what are the factors that are taken into consideration before granting the bail? The court knows it that the accused has committed a crime, but still the court grants the bail because the charges are not proved yet, because there are a number of other factors. There must be his family issues, there must be some other social and personal factors involved in the case. But the Supreme Court was this time trying to consider that whether the risk to the lives and liberty of victims and witnesses are to be considered before an accused is released on bail. This is one of the factors which still the courts have not started to take into consideration. And that's what the courts are supposed to do. Okay arguments now according to the prosecution the accused and others in azamgarh led an organized crime cell that allegedly commits crimes punishable by death under, under chapter 16 17 and 22 of the ipc so the prosecution contended and put this uh, before the supreme court that they they run an organization in azamgarh and they commit organized crime cell there is an organized crime cell they lead an organization of an organized crime cell do you have any idea about what is an organized crime what is an organized crime 
Tell me. Any idea? What is an organized crime? Yes, very good Prableen. Crimes done by group for profits. There are crimes which are planned and controlled by group of people, group of powerful people. Okay. And at a very large scale. At a very large scale. Okay. Contract killing is an example. Any crime may fall in the category of organized crime if that crime is planned and controlled by a very large group of people at a very mass scale at a very large scale now i have another question my next question is tell me crime falls in which of the lists union list state list concurrent list crime is which subject union central subject state subject or a concurrent subject Mehul says complex of highly centralized enterprises set up for the purpose of engaging in illegal activities. Very good, Mehul. Very good. Racketeering is an example. Bad just bad them. Yes. Now tell me crime is a state subject or a central subject or a concurrent subject? Are you sure? Bad just bad utum. Everybody is sure Mehul Soumya crime is a state subject or a concurrent subject. But see, crime may fall under concurrent list. Okay, crime may fall under concurrent list, but police and public order they are they are state subjects. Okay, the police and the public order, they fall exclusively under the state jurisdiction. So de facto responsibility of controlling the crimes by way of legislations and by way of the implementations of such legislations lies completely and squarely on the shoulders of the state governments. Okay. Criminal law, yes, very good, probably. In criminal law is concurrent, but crime may be under state. Crime is something which is directly, which has a direct connection with the police and the public order. Okay, and police and public order, they are state subjects. So, crime indirectly falls under the state subject unofficially. It is something which is de facto. Okay, not de jure, but but de facto. 
crime is a de facto state subject in that sense the central government the central government is empowered to make any central legislation on any criminal law but actually practically we can see that the responsibility of controlling the crimes lies on the shoulders of every state government and for your information i must tell you that every state has a different crime pattern will you agree with this every state has different crime patterns if you look at the crime patterns in uttar pradesh and bihar they are absolutely different from the crime patterns in the state of maharashtra and karnataka they are absolutely different you know the crime patterns in the state of kerala in the state of tamil nadu are absolutely different from the crime patterns in the state of odisha and west bengal okay and yes baat jas baat tum you are exactly right since uh, the police and the public order they are square, they are, they are the state subjects so every state government has been given this much liberty to um, to make state amendments in the central legislation such as ipc and crpc if you read read crpc below the text of every section you can find various state amendments that this section would apply in such modified manner in the state of up or in the state of bihar or in the state of maharashtra isn't it now what i am telling you is that we have different crime patterns in different state subjects so every state today can have its own legislation according to the crime pattern patterns it has okay the state of rajasthan you cannot expect the state of rajasthan to have crimes like gangsters you cannot expect the state of rajasthan to have them because the state of rajasthan is plunged into another sort of crime patterns you know the state of rajasthan you can see there are petty kind of offenses there might them there they are, they are petty kind of offenses as well as there there are very large scale crimes also but what what are the usually the problems in mumbai there are the biggest problem in mumbai and the state of maharashtra is the problem of gangsters international dons there are people international dons okay just a second just hold on for a while now prabhleen says if one looks at chatisgarh then there are special laws on superstition yes there are special laws on superstitions like for example if you look at the crime patterns in karnataka like most of the crimes are cyber crimes if you look at the crime patterns in the state of up there are like probably uh, the road side crimes okay there is loot there is extortion that's what is there in the state of bihar also okay that is what is there the, in the state of bihar also right then there are uh, you know uh, loot rapes murders but karnataka has crimes like cyber crimes digital crimes okay then we have crimes uh, in the state of maharashtra and mumbai I I was telling you that there is a problem of uh, there is a problem of international crimes, international dons and gangsters. ये बहुत ज़्यादा वहाँ पर dominate करते हैं. तो since very beginning, Maharashtra had a law. Maharashtra has a law, and that is MC Coca. Do you remember this Maharashtra? Maharashtra Control of Organised Crimes Act. Maharashtra Control of Organized Crimes Act (MC) M Coca, sorry, M Coca. Maharashtra Control of Organized Crimes Act. Now, this 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 M Coca is one of the legislations of the state of Maharashtra that controls organized crimes. Okay, and it is it has severe punishments. 
there's very stringent punishments once the person is apprehended under m coca it is very difficult to for him to spare his skin you know to save his skin and on the same pattern the second state in india to legislate a law on the pattern of m coca is which state which state in india is the second state to have a law on the control of organized crimes act do you know this which state in india is the second state to have legislated a law like m coca and this has happened recently No, but just rather to know that is the state of UP because UP has got this legislation called Uttar Pradesh Control of Organized Crimes Act. In fact, the name is also very the name of the state is only different. Otherwise, the name of the yes, probably that is UP state of UP UP Koga Uttar Pradesh Control of Organized Crimes Act. Uttar Pradesh Control of Organized Crimes Act. So, I was telling you the discussion started on organized crimes. Okay, so the, according to the prosecution, the accused and others in Azamgarh, they are leading an organized crime cell that allegedly commits crimes punishable by death under Chapter 16, 17 and 22 of the IPC. The gang's primary goal is to achieve a competitive advantage in both physical and financial terms. Gains are made by committing a large number of serious violations. This gang is also claimed to instill a great deal of fear and horror in its members. Okay. What is the gang's primary goal? The gang's primary goal is to achieve a competitive advantage in both physical and financial terms. Gains are made by committing a large number of serious violations. Okay. Competitive advantage, competitive advantage in both physical and financial terms. The what, are, what what is the gang working upon? The gang is working upon to gain physical dominance over the society, to gain financial, to, to gain to to profit themselves, you know, to benefit themselves financially, and gains. How the gains are made by committing a large number of serious violations. कभी हफ्ता कलेक्ट करना है किसी से किसी को इंटिमिडेट करके उससे पैसे निकलवाने हैं दैट्स व्हाट दे डू दिस गैंग इज आल्सो क्लेम टू इंस्टिल अ ग्रेट डील ऑफ फियर एंड हॉरर इन इट्स मेंबर्स द एपलन फर्दर एलेजेस दैट इन द पास्ट प्रोवाइडिंग बेल टू क्रिमिनल्स अफेक्टेड द पीस एंड ऑर्डर सिचुएशन द एपलन फर्दर एलेजेस दैट इन द पास्ट Providing bail to criminals affected the peace and order situation. The appellant gives the example of a person who was accused with 64 criminal offences but was freed on bond including murders, dakaiti, criminal intimidation, extortion and violations of the UP Gangster Act. Finally, eight police officers were allegedly killed with numerous more critically injured as a squad of officers attempted to apprehend him in a case. As a result, the appellant contends that when releasing history she cheaters suspected of horrific crimes like murder, rape or other types of physical injury, courts must exercise extreme caution. Okay. The appellant further alleges that in the past, providing bail to criminals affected the peace and order situation. The appellant gives the example of a person who was accused with 64 criminal offences but was freed on bond 
including murders, decathy, criminal intimidation, extortion and violations of the UP Gangster Act. Finally, eight police officers were allegedly killed, with numerous more critically injured as a squad of officers attempted to apprehend him in the case. As a result, the appellant contends that when releasing history cheaters suspected of hor horrific crimes like murder, rape or other types of physical injury, courts must ex exercise extreme caution. That's what the appellant, you know, contended. The courts must exercise extreme caution. Okay, now look at the judgment. This is a criminal appeal filed against the Allahabad High Court's decision to grant bail to the accused who has been arrested for a crime punishable under Section 3.1 of the Uttar Pradesh Criminal and Anti-Social Activities Avoidance Act 1986. Okay, this court declared in Niru Yadav versus the state of UP that where a case was made that the blamed was a set of experiences Sheeta, the high courts needed to examine everything about rather than record that the denounced was allowed to abandon impartial grounds discretionarily okay now this is a criminal appeal filed against the Allahabad high court's decision to grant bail to the to Vikas Dubey and he was accused for committing crimes punishable under Section 3.1 of the UP Gangster and Anti-Social Activities Prevention Act 1986. Okay, now the court referred to a case, Niru Yadav versus the state of UP. Okay, where the accused was an experience, was a history sheeter. And the high courts needed to examine in such cases the record of the accused okay rather than exercising this power of discretion of granting the bail the high court should take into account the history of the accused whether he has been an history cheater or he is a first time offender okay in ash muhammad versus shivraj singh in ash muhammad versus shivraj singh this is another case which was referred to by the supreme court this jury stated that when civilians are afraid to live quietly and horrible crimes prevent the establishment of a well-ordered society, the courts play an even more important role and the responsibility is severe. In Ash Muhammad vs. Shivraj Singh, what did the judges say? The judges stated that when civilians are afraid to, afraid to live quietly, if they are not able to live peacefully, and horrible crimes that prevent the establishment of an egalitarian society, a well-ordered society. The judiciary, the responsibility of the judiciary increases to a great extent because their responsibility is great and severe. And it emphasized the significance of doing a comprehensive examination into the accused's violent background. It emphasized the significance of doing a comprehensive examination into the accused's violent background. Go delve deep into the accused's violent background. Find out, try to find out. The courts must try to find out what is his history. In Prasanta Kumar Sarkar versus Ashish Chatter, Chatterjee and others, this is yet third case referred to by the Supreme Court in the judgment. It was decided that this jury would not normally interfere with the High Court's decision on whether to grant or refuse bail to an accused person. Nonetheless, it was critical for the High Court to exercise its discretion carefully, prudently and thoroughly in accordance with the balance established by a succession of this court's decision. Okay. The court said in this case, the, the Supreme Court in Prasanta Kumar Sarkar versus Ashish Chatterjee and others, the Supreme Court stated that the judges, the Supreme Court is not trying to interfere in the discretion of the high courts in granting the bail. But while exercising this discretion, that does not mean if you are, if bail is a court's discretion that the, the, the court is going to exercise it without due care and caution. No, that should not be the case. The Supreme Court said that we understand and we are not trying to interfere in the discretion of the high courts in granting the bail to an accused person but nonetheless it is critical for the high courts 
to exercise this discretion very carefully, prudently, wisely and thoroughly. They should like reckon with all the, you know, all the uh, important uh, events in the history of the accused in accordance with the balance established by a succession of this court's decision. In accordance with the balance established by a succession of this court's decision. Okay. Have you understood this? Now the following points of view are to are to taken into consideration when making a decision. And when the high courts are encountering this these kinds of situations in a case where it has to exercise this discretion in granting the bail. Then these are some of the points which are not concrete in nature but they should be taken into account before, by the high courts before granting the bail and before exercising its discretion in granting the bail. Okay. First, whether there was a prima facie or reasonable basis to believe that the accused had committed a criminal act. Just try to find out. The high courts must try to find out whether a prima facie case is made out or some reasonable basis exists to believe that there is something fishy in the case and the accused is somehow connected with the crime. You know, the high courts must try to find that out. Whether there was a prima facie or reasonable basis at least to believe that the accused has committed the alleged crime. Right? Because no matter how much of evidence has been destroyed, no matter how well the criminal accused has played no matter how the well the uh, no matter how well the criminal has played or accused has played there might be some reason with the some reasonable ground always does exist to show that the accused had has some connection with the alleged crime even if that exists the high court should like become very cautious and conscious before granting the bail okay whether there was a prima facie or reasonable basis to believe that the accused had committed a criminal act. Okay. Second is nature and gravity of the inquiries, the enormity of the authority within the context of a prosecution. Okay. Within the context of the prosecution. Right. Then, what is the nature and gravity, enormity of the authority within the context of a prosecution? How the, uh, what kind of authority is involved in that case? Nature and gravity of the inquiries. That means if the inquiry happens to be very grave, then some authority with some enormous uh, stature is involved in it. Okay. The enormity of the authority within the context of the prosecution. Like for example, if the case happens to be of a national importance, so the CBI or some some great authority would be involved in the case. So that is the enormity of the authority within the context of the prosecution that up to what level the authorities are involved in the in investigation. If it happens to be a gangster crime, then obviously people from the top to bottom would be involved in the investigation of the case and the nature of the gra gravity of the inquiries would be very deeper and deeper. Okay. So the nature and gravity of the inquiries, the enormity of the authority, a very grave crime and the authority within the context of a prosecution. Okay. What authorities are involved? Who has been given the case to be investigated? Okay. If CBI is involved and the matter happens to be very serious, then the bail should not be granted. The risk of the suspect defaulting or escaping if released on bail. The risk of the suspect defaulting or escaping if released on bail. What is the risk of the suspect defaulting or escaping if released on bail? Like for example, if the, uh, if the accused is released on bail, then there is always risk involved that he might tamper with the evidences he might destroy the evidences. He might intimidate the witnesses, his witnesses against him. Okay. He might escape. He might flee from the country. 
these are always the risk involved so these kinds of issues need to be taken into account and the accused's personality conduct circumstances situation and status the plausibility of the incident being rehashed okay what is how is the personality of the accused what is his conduct what are the circumstances what is the situation what is the status okay what what, what are the plausible factors of the incident being rehashed like for example if he can he can uh, tamper the whole incident there might be some factors the legitimate fear of the testimony being manipulated that's what i told you if he is released on bail he might intimidate the witnesses he might destroy the evidences so there is always a legitimate fear of the testimony that hovers over over the head of the case being manipulated the risk of equity becoming obstructed by the issuance of bail okay there is always a risk of equity becoming obstructed by the issuance of bail like some of the criminals and some of the accused are being granted bail some of them are you know, some of the bills are rejected is always the risk of equity becoming obstructed by the issuance of bail so after considering all the aforementioned factors the supreme court reversed reversed the high court's decision granting bail to the accused that alone would not have prompted us to make the result <coughs> we suggest but the respondent's background clearly contradicts the high court's decision to release him okay now this is all all much about the case if you have any question or anything anything to add you are most welcome to do that okay then if you have no questions then i'm signing off and uh, i'm signing off then uh, uh, we'll meet tomorrow with an, with another case okay till then all the very best and bye bye